Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we are going to install the 3D Fused X-Axis Linear Upgrade Kit for the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro 3D printers. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So remember when my friend Cody at 3D Fused sent me this cool Y-axis linear rail upgrade kit for the Ender 3? Well, 3D Fused has now released the X-axis linear rail upgrade kit. Actually, they sell it two ways, the X-only kit and the X and Z kit, which, as you may have guessed, includes linear rails for the Z-axis as well. And because you can get it two different ways, I'm going to make two different videos. This one showing how to install the X only kit, and a second one showing you how to install the X and Z kit. Now before we get going, you might be wondering how I've been getting along with the linear rail kit on the Y axis. And the answer is, so far it's great. The stock Y axis has those wheels that ride in the channels on a B slot extrusion. And as those wheels wear, you'll need to adjust the eccentric nuts to tighten up the stit and reduce slop. But if you get them a little bit too tight, there can be too much friction on the y-axis, and you could end up with little flat spots on the sides of the wheels from being compressed too tightly against the extrusion. The 3D fused y-axis linear rail kit was easy to install. It's been rock steady. I like the belt tensioning system on it. And really the only maintenance you need to do is every few weeks give the sides of the rails a drop or two of lubricant, move the bed back and forth a few times, and then give it a quick wipe with a paper towel. For lubricant, I've been using TriFlow with PTFE, but Cody sent me a bottle of his own linear rail oil, so I'm going to start using that. So here's a quick overview of what we're going to do on this video, just so you know what all is involved in the process. We're going to unload any filament that's loaded in the printer. And I don't mean just snipping it off here where it goes in the extruder. I mean, we're going to heat the nozzle up and pull it all out. We're going to disconnect the Bowden tube from the extruder side. We're going to unplug the cables from the x-axis stepper motor, the extruder stepper motor, and the x-axis end stop switch, and set that cabling aside. We're going to remove the fan shroud and the hot end, and that'll still be connected to the main board by its cable. That's okay, we're just going to set that down behind the printer to keep it out of the way. We're going to remove the cross beam at the top of the printer, and then we're going to slide the entire x-axis assembly up and off the printer. Then we're going to take the x-axis stepper motor, end stop, and extruder bracket, and the wheels from the left and the right side, and transfer all of those over to the new x-axis assembly. We'll slide this new assembly back on the printer, put the cross beam back on, attach the hot end and fan shroud to the new x-carriage, reconnect all the things that we disconnected, get the belt leveled or trammed if that's your preferred term, and then we're done. Okay, well, I'm excited to get started on this, so let's get started. If you have filament loaded in the printer, turn the printer on, heat the nozzle, and unload the filament. Then turn the printer off and unplug it. Wait for the printer to cool to a safe temperature before proceeding. Manually move the x-axis arm about three quarters of the way up the z-axis so you have room to work. Disconnect the Bowden tube from the extruder. Remove the fan shroud from the hot end. Then remove the hot end from the X carriage. Set the hot end safely out of the way behind the printer. Unplug the cable from the extruder stepper motor, the x-axis stepper motor, and the x-axis limit switch. Remove the spool holder and set it aside. Remove the four bolts holding the top extrusion to the z-uprights and set it aside. Slide the stock X assembly up and off the printer. Remove the bracket from the non-motor side of the stock X assembly. Loosen the X belt idler to release tension on the belt. 
Unhook the belt from the X carriage, then remove the belt. Remove the motor and wheel bracket from the other side of the stock X assembly. Remove the wheels from the non-motor bracket. Install these wheels on the non-motor side of the 3D fused X assembly. Note that one of the holes is larger. This is for the eccentric nut. Now disassemble the wheel sandwich on the motor side of the X assembly. Cut the zip tie securing the belt on the 3D fused X assembly so that it won't be in the way. Then transfer the wheels and the extruder bracket to the 3D fused X assembly, recreating the wheel sandwich. This part can be tricky, so be patient and take your time. Remove the four screws holding the X-axis limit switch cover to the bracket. The screws go through the cover and into the motor. Separate the limit switch cover and the bracket from the stepper motor. Install the stepper motor onto the 3D fused X assembly using the screws included in the kit. Ensure that the connector faces down. Remove the X-axis limit switch from the stock cover. Install the limit switch on the adjustable limit switch mount on the 3D fused X assembly using the screws included in the kit. Use the X-belt tensioning screw to tighten up the belt. Slide the 3D fused X-axis upgrade kit onto the Z uprights. Align the threaded rod with the brass nut in the extruder bracket. Reattach the top extrusion. Reattach the spool holder. and reattach the extruder stepper motor cable, the X-axis stepper motor cable, 
and the x-axis limit switch cable. Reinstall the hot end and the fan shroud using the stock screws. Reattach the Bowden tube to the extruder, and if you use a collet clip, snap it back in place. Let's adjust the x-axis limit switch so we can set the nozzle's home position. Loosen the set screw, holding the adjustable x-axis limit switch mount in place. Press the X carriage against the limit switch and slide both until the nozzle is aligned above the left edge of the bed. Then tighten the set screw to keep the limit switch in position. Next, let's adjust the Z axis limit switch to get the nozzle closer to the bed. Manually adjust the Z axis until the nozzle is about a millimeter above the bed. Then loosen the set screw holding the Z axis limit switch mount in place. Slide the mount up until you hear the switch click then tighten the screws to secure the mount. Now use your favorite method to level or tram your bed and then you're ready to print. There, that wasn't too bad, right? Now we've got an Ender 3 Pro with linear rails on the X and Y axes and wow, did this replace a lot of stock parts. Be sure to save these and keep them someplace safe in case you ever want to revert to the stock configuration. Now, linear rails are supposed to provide smoother motion and higher precision, so I'm looking forward to seeing how the Ender 3 Pro prints now that both the X and Y axes are on rails. I'll put this through its paces for a little bit before proceeding to the X and Z installation video. And a huge thanks to Cody at 3D Fuse for sending this upgrade kit to me free of charge. There is a link in the description to this kit on their site if you're interested. The X-Axis kit is just under $90 US, and the X and Z kit is a little more at just under $150 US. One more thing you'll find in the description is a discount code that will save you 15% when you buy this from 3D Fused. It's valid for as long as it's in the description. And one last bonus, Cody told me he would include a bottle of his rail lube for the first 10 people who use that discount code. Well, thanks for making it all the way to the end, and thanks for everybody who likes, comments on, and shares these videos. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on any cool 3D printing stuff. If you liked the episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, but either way, please share your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing, consider supporting the channel with a one-time micropayment. You could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar. Links for those are in the description. Another way to help out is to use the affiliate links in the description when you're shopping online. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but a tiny portion of any purchase you make goes to the channel to help cover the cost of making cool videos for you. Well, now that I've got linear rails on the X and Y axes, I'm going to go print something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.